Every time there's a natural disaster or one caused by human error or human evil, people of faith respond by saying something like, we're praying for you or our thoughts and prayers are with you. And until recently, nobody ever objected to those expressions of concern and solidarity. But now, that sentiment is met with less than generous response. Something like, thoughts and prayers are not enough. Or, spare me your thoughts and prayers. Do something. That not-so-thinly-veiled criticism falsely assumes that Christians offer thoughts and prayers because they aren't willing to provide practical help and solutions to real problems. Now, are there some Christians for whom thoughts and prayers is nothing but an empty cliche? Of course. But there are many more who pull on a pair of knee-high boots to muck out a flooded house after a hurricane, or take time off from work to re-roof a stranger's home after a tornado ripped it off. They donate huge sums of money for recovery efforts and lobby their Congress people to enact legislation to, to make schools safer. People who pray are not just willing to get their hands dirty, they're willing to get their hearts broken. For them, prayer isn't a spiritual way to signal your virtue. It's the first thing you do before you settle into the seat of a skid steer to clean up the mess nature made. Or it's what you whisper as you hold a child who is too frightened to go to school. Criticizing thoughts and prayers isn't just an insult to people who pray. It's a slam against people who think. We pray because we believe there is a God who hears and responds. And we act because we first thought critically about the dynamics that created the crisis and then thought creatively about how to solve it. I'm puzzled by people who get offended when someone offers thoughts and prayers. If prayer isn't your thing, why does it bother you that it's mine? I think the critics would answer with something like, I'm offended because you're substituting empty platitudes for real solutions. Well, for us, prayer isn't a platitude. And we believe that prayer requires us to use whatever power and resources we have to provide help when people suffer. Intercession and intervention are not mutually exclusive. It could be that some who criticize thoughts and prayers are saying one thing but mean another. I think what they're saying is, you would rather say a prayer than solve the problem. I think what they mean is, I'm mad at you because you don't agree with my solution. But I could be wrong. That's why we call these not a sermon, just a thought.